Welcome, I'm Rogers Anderson. As we travel around the county and pick up some new names and activities and things to do for our county, we're very honored to have with us today here in the studio, George Hamilton, and you probably won't recognize him coming right out. You don't have your hat on yet, George. Can I put it on? Please, please. All right, here please. I go. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, well, it's good to be here, Mayor Anderson. Thank you very much. Always good to see you. And All for right. many of you would not know this, but we've got another guest. George is going to introduce Will here in a few moments. But uh, George lives in our county and uh, comes from a very, very uh, high-profile dad. They had to live up to some pretty high standards there. Well, you know, he lived in the Williamson County from, I guess, about 1986. To 2014, George Hamilton IV, the international ambassador of country music, Grand Ole Opry legend. Will I will surely miss you, and how I wish you would not go. There are some things that we can't change, and some answers we may. But we will meet again Somewhere on the other side we we'll walk hand in hand It's looking like it's over now But it surely ain't the end No, it ain't Mighty proud of him. He taught me a lot of stuff, and I tried to remember some of it. One of them was cut your hair, but uh, somehow I, I forgot. Uh -huh. But I'm mighty proud of George IV. He took country music and Tennessee music all around the world and uh, really pretty much inspired this thing we do called the Viva Nash Vegas radio show. And there's a picture of George IV here back about, that might have been 2012 or 2013 when we were back at Historic Handy Hardware, the birthplace of the Viva National Avenue. Columbia Vegas. Avenue. Yeah, beautiful downtown Franklin. And there is Will, who is known as William Covington, our director of hospitality on the Viva Nash Vegas radio show, is sitting right beside me and right at the hospitality desk. How are you doing? Doing good. Yes. All right. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, before we actually talk about what you're doing now, I know you've got some other acclimates here. You've got a, you've got a, a, a an activity we're doing now down at the archives. Yeah, Williamson County Archives and Museum. And when is that meeting now? When do they? Well, meet? we do it. Normally, we did the Vivian Las Vegas Radio Show at Cambrose every other week, and so now we do it at the Williamson County Archives every other other week. So it becomes a little bit complicated for people to understand. The best thing to do is check our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Viva Nash Vegas Radio Show for the exact time and place of the show. And what can we expect if we go to that? Well, you want to tell us what? What can we expect? What kind of entertainment we're going to have? That's your job. Well, you can expect Americana music at its greatest. We have people coming over from all around the United States. Uh, we get people from overseas from time to time. Uh, we have cloggers that come in. And we've got a lady from uh, London, England, yeah. Miss Barbara A. Stone, Barbara who a. Stone. plays some of the greatest classical music you can ever want to listen to. Yeah. Let's talk about, you mentioned something that a lot of the folks watching this show may not know the terminology Americana music. Yeah, well, Americana music, I was looking for my map. I left it at the archives. <laughs> so you got to go down and visit the Williamson County Country Music Wall of Fame at the Williamson County Archives and Museum. At Five Points. That's yes. at Five Points across from some places at right there on the corner. Right know. across from the post office. Yeah. And the Americana Music Triangle is something that has been uh, a very happening thing. Uh, you can go visit them on Facebook also. and They have a website. And the Americana Music Triangle is uh, an area with sort of New Orleans and uh, Memphis and Nashville uh, as the sort of edges, I believe, of the triangle. Um, and the whole idea that all these forms of music that came to America all mixed together in this area called the Americana Music Triangle, coming up from the south, and you got the uh, jazz, and maybe blues, blues. country and western, yeah. the true. Yeah. yeah. It's basically American root music. That's yeah. exactly right. You know, um, jazz got a little bit of influence uh, uh, from it. 
uh, so does the, uh, this rock and roll we got here, uh, rockabilly, you know, all that came from the basic roots of the blues or the American gospel music. Yeah. And from those roots, it all kind of encompassed into what they considered uh, Americana, just to find a group to put it in. Now we've also got some people who may even be near here who come from East Tennessee. And uh, in East Tennessee, of course, there's quite a big contingency of Americana music with the Appalachian music. Mm -hmm. You would have Jumpin' Bill Carlisle, Dolly Parton, Chet Atkins. I believe even Carl Smith came from over in East Tennessee. Who at the table may be from East Tennessee originally? <laughs> That'd be me. All right. So yeah. you know a lot about the history of Americana music in the, the mountains. And well, the I was from an area outside of Knoxville, a little, little country place. It's no longer small anymore. It's like Franklin. It's yeah. called uh, uh, Farragut. But yeah. back in those days, there was a gentleman that had a, a, um, a grocery store chain yeah. called Kaz Walker. Yeah. And Kaz Walker had on his show a gentleman by the name of Porter Wagner. Yeah. And I think we've heard of him in country yeah. music. And he introduced this new teenage girl by the name of Dolly Parton from yeah. Sevierville, Tennessee, yeah. on her on his show one morning. And from that time on, it was kind of like the Nashville side yeah. of, that occurred here in Nashville for many, many years under uh, John Blank. It, um, the Nashville South? Yes. Well, you bet Chet Atkins. Chet Atkins yeah. and Thompson, Owen Bradley. Owen and Bradley and yeah. some of those. And so out of that era of music, and you're right, um, it kind of all migrated down here to the yeah. to the Middle Tennessee side. But the Americana music you can expect to hear on your show or in this particular area is really got some very deep roots, not only in the Mississippi area yeah. where we think of it in Arkansas, but in other parts of the area. Oh, yeah, of course, the birthplace of country music. It's interesting, on the Grand Ole Opry, we had such a big happening, but of course in Bristol, uh, Tennessee, right there you would have the Carter family and Jimmy Rogers meeting together. Uh, it's very interesting to me, too, that two neighbors from East Tennessee are now two neighbors in Williamson County. Well, Who would those be? It would be pretty close, wouldn't it? You and I. And well, you and I, and but also you and Dolly Parton. Dolly, Dolly Parton. Well, now, Dolly Parton probably wouldn't know me. Let's get that yeah. straight. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about your dad. How, what influenced his? I never had thought of it before. His style of music, yeah. uh, was it his parents, or was it just a way of life that he grew up with? Well, it's very neat because from the Americana Music Triangle prior to being known as Americana Music Triangle. Back in the, uh, I guess, late 40s, uh, my father used to listen to the Grand Ole Opry on the radio in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where he was from. Uh, his, grand his grandfather was a railroad man, and they used to sit by the radio in Winston-Salem, and uh, my great-great-grandfather well, great would tell my father stories about the railroad, and he loved to hear songs by Jimmy Rogers, the singer Brakeman, and of course, Roy Acuff, right. Wabash Cannonball. So he turned my father on to the Grand Ole Opry, and then my father's uh, father became an executive vice president of Goody's Headache Powders over in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And so they used to have a connection here in Nashville, and they would send my father on a bus over to Nashville with a name tag. He'd stay at the YMCA downtown to see all of his country music heroes. So, uh, you know, he was turned on by his grandfather and then sort of pushed or allowed to travel from my grandfather and my grandmother, who was a, she would actually take over my father's paper routes while he was out of town to come see the Grand Ole Opry. So, now you've carried on the tradition. Were you always influenced by the country western Americana type music? We, I grew up backstage at the Ryman Auditorium and uh, just, that's how I came up with my Nash Vegas trademark. The whole idea that, you know, you have Las Vegas and there's a lot of glitz and glamour, but Nashville has its own rhinestones and neon, but it's got a country feel and kind of like a laid back feel. Nash Vegas. Um, and so I grew up backstage at the Grand Ole Opry watching Jimmy C. Newman, who had on sometimes a rhinestone uh, alligator suit. He was the alligator man and little Jimmy Dickens and uh, Roy A. Cuff, um, all these people, Ernest Tubb, they were big heroes of mine. One year, I went to the Wembley Festival over in London, England, which is a big festival, international festival of country music that my father first went to, and then uh, Bill Anderson was there with him, and they were inspired to bring back the idea for fanfare to the CMA from this Wembley International Festival of Country Music. 
On this plane flying over there was Marty Robbins, uh, Ernest Tubb, Dale Reeves, all kinds of my father. And it was just like amazing. So I grew up around these things, these people. Grew up around Minnie Pearl. And, um, you know, I did grow long hair. And, I, you know, there have been times that my music was louder. Uh, I was a big <laughs> fan of Waylon Jennings and the Outlaw Movement, and Willie Nelson. But I really love the traditional sounds, and I'm very happy at my mellow age now to play acoustic music and have a lot of banjos and auto harp, piano, uh, dobro, fiddles, and stuff like that. We even have Tommy Jackson come out there and do some clogging. You know, so. Tommy's been clogging longer than he's been alive. I All think. right, uh, he was born Will, clogging. <laughs> Will, how did you get introduced to this type of music? In, uh, Americana, or even how did you, how did you run up with uh, George here? Well, I've been listening to the music all of my life, and here in the latter part of, of my life, I realized what it was that about the music that attracted me, and it was the sound of that pedal steel guitar, yeah. and I just loved it. And I've been listening to the, uh, the Grand Ole Opry ever, you know, since I was a kid. I remember when I got my first little nine transistor, you know, nine yeah. volt radio. You remember those? I do. And transistor, yes, sir. nine volt. Yeah, and I would get up in the bed and and listen to the you know the, the Grand Ole Opry. Well, and you know, because we grew up in an era where a transistor radio meant a nine volt battery. Yeah, and it wasn't well, two double A's or a C. It was yeah. a nine volt. Yep. And you, there was snap, crackle, and pop in that old radio. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, <clears> you had to lock it in just on the direct station. And of course, it was it was uh, uh, it was directional in that if you were too far to the left or too far to the right, those were terms not popular back then. Yeah. Just to get the WSM tower yeah, that, yeah. off from Concord Road, mm -hmm. you weren't gonna get it. And, yeah. And of course, if you walked around the building, you may lose it. Yeah. yeah. But but many of us did that. As oh a kid yeah, I, up. I still do it. I was uh, got a little piece of land that I'm working on over in North Carolina, uh, inherited from the family. And uh, I've been over there, you know, trying to tune in 80 stubs on WSM. And it is like being a, a ham radio operator or something yeah. like that. So we're like, okay. You know, you mentioned a you know, the guy's name there, Eddie yeah. Stubbs. That's oh, not yeah. on our things to talk about. They just don't come yeah. any nicer, more historical, yeah. excellent voice, made for radio, and knows the, from the, it just seems like he knows everything about country music. Yeah. And, and anything about an individual, he must have, his mind just must never turn off. I think you're right, and it is very, he's a walking encyclopedia of country music. He's and, a good uh, fiddle player, too. Yeah. Well, now, somebody else told me he could play the fiddle pretty good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he came to town playing fiddle with uh, Kitty Wells. I did not know that. Yeah, but yes. now the one, it's very interesting you asked that story about how William and I met. Because we sort of met under questionable circumstances. <laughs> when I came over, he walked over to a house that I have, and I just moved in. We were neighbors, but we didn't know it yet, but then we did. He came over and said, uh, who are you? And I said, well, I'm George Hamilton V. And you said? Uh, I don't think so. He says, yes, I am. And I'm you like, said you're making fun of my favorite singer. And <laughs> then he, uh, he kept on, and I, uh, I was vividly yeah. trying to uh, uphold the, the name of his father. Yeah. And I didn't know at that time it was his father. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you don't disrespect that name like that. <laughs> I'm like, they ain't no fear, 12, 15, 17. No, it's just not happening. Then he took me in the house yeah. and I looked around. Then I dropped my head and said, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've been, been friends, friends ever since. Yeah. <laughs> then he met George the Six, because that's my son, my lovely wife's son. She's also our cameraman on the show. And you, you know, you may think, well, wait a minute, a woman is a cameraman. We like to have fun names on our show. One of our stars of the show, too, is sitting right beside William Covington at our hospitality desk. Davis Spalding Jr. Davis Spalding Jr. And he is a man of constant leisure. He, he is, is a man, man of constant leisure. I recognize the tune. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and what we do is during the show, of course, it all starts off when William holds up the Viva Nash figures. Sign. Everybody screams out Viva Nash Vegas. And the whole idea is just to celebrate the true spirit of Nashville and really Franklin. And that's why in the Williamson County Archives and Museum, we have put up the Williamson County Country Music Wall of Fame because so many of the big Opry stars, uh, Minnie Pearl is buried here. 
Skeeter Davis is buried here. Many of the opera stars actually lived in the Williamson County area. Of course, Eddie Arnold developed a good mm -hmm. deal of Williamson County in Brentwood. And uh, little Jimmy Dickens, George Jones. So much history has happened. And this would be a place where they would live their lives and maybe the rhyme would be where their stage was. So we just love the wide open countryside of Williamson County and celebrating the fact that, wow, there's a whole lot of music history here like the Americana Music Triangle and uh, like the Pilgrimage Festival that's coming up on September 26th and 27th. Let's talk about that a little yeah. bit. Let's give it a plug. So down at uh, on Franklin Road, still yep. inside the city limits of, of uh, Franklin, uh, you've got a 300-acre farm called Harlingsdale. Yeah. Many people will know that. It's one of the, one of the original um, horses uh, that has bred more um, um, walking horse yeah. winners uh, is buried there, raised there, and eventually buried yeah. there. And on that particular weekend, on the end of September, the 26th, 27th, yeah. 28th, on that Friday and Saturday, a whole host of people are coming to town to put on a music venue. Willie Nelson, Cheryl Crow, Dr. John, Weezer, Wilco, uh, Nico Case. I mean, it's going to be really, really nice. And that's just a few of the people. It's just amazing the roster they have for those two days and also the, the chances to see arts and crafts being uh, displayed from the area and things you can buy and eat, really great natural foods from the area. I think it's the first time that I can remember. We've had many excellent entertainers that come to Franklin and Brentwood and throughout our county. But a host of that many people yeah. on an outdoor setting event, yeah, uh, it's just amazing, and that's been put together just in the last one year to yeah. fifteen months. So, if you're watching this show and you've got some free time, and uh, I know the tickets are selling very briskly, yeah, uh, there'll probably be some walk-in ticket sales. Yeah. Just depends on the weather. But it'll be a packed full weekend. Oh, I'm, yeah. Hope we have some good weather. And if not, the entertainers will be protected. Now, the, yeah. the participants may get a little wet. Well, they after the heat wave, we've been having some That's drizzle exactly might feel right. good. You know, so. so your your show, uh, your Nashville, your Viva La Vega show that you're doing, um, you did it for a long time down at Handy Hardware here in town. That's the Viva. I'll let you hold that. And I'll go back to the Handy Hardware. Please. Place. So here we are on the stage at the historic birthplace of the Viva Nash Vegas Radio Show, Handy Hardware. Andy Willoughby and, of course, Dr. Willoughby and Donna. Uh, so many people have helped us, and they gave us a chance to have our stage there, and we still have our souvenir stand there. They've still got fresh popcorn and all kinds of neat things at Handy Hardware, and you can stand on the square of carpet where so many of the legends have stood <laughs> when they came to appear on the Viva Nash Vegas Radio. The stage is still there. Who knows? Maybe that means there may be some special things happening maybe. there from time to time. But we've got lots of the props still there. You can see it's very exciting. Many people spend a couple days there just looking at the stage and shopping inside Handy Hardware. But we had a great time there. And then we just had too many people. So then we moved to where we could also have some food over to Cambros. And then the chance came to head over to the Williamson County Archives and Museum. I went there several years back and thought this would be a really neat place to have the show. So when I talked to Amy, who was in charge down there, I said, now, I know this is a big question, but could we please do our show here? And she said, you mean it? And we said, yeah. So William came over and did, he signed the paperwork, you know. Next thing you know, the rest is show business history. So is it your plan for the remainder of this year, 2015 and early in 16, to keep this same pace up? meeting every other week at the archives or at Kimbrough's carrying it through the winter months. So the people that are watching this show, maybe they can't come this week, but maybe they right. could come some other time. Yeah, basically, as I said, you know, stay in touch. There are the certain holidays that happen uh, correct. where the show is, the schedule gets slightly adjusted. But uh, I think down at the Williamson and Franklin Visitor Center downtown, uh, they have a, a plaque that tells which location we'll be at on that weekend. And you can visit our Facebook.com slash Viva Nash Vegas radio show site or Viva Nash Vegas .com or if you can't be there, just turn on our Ustream channel to see what comes down the computer screen. So I've always, I was thinking 
of asking this question to you as we were sitting here. Uh, I've heard in my lifetime that there's one or two people that had a major influence in the way uh, that you may deliver your voice or your style. You hear people talking about a gentleman by the name of Buddy Holly. Yeah. And so many, so many women talk about a young lady by the name of Kitty Wales, you mentioned, or Patsy Cline. And in the, even in later years, we hear about Loretta Lynn and the influence that these Tammy Wynette. We could sit here and just talk on and on and on. Who had the biggest, other than your dad, who might have had the biggest influence on your, your style? You mean my speaking style? Well, they wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to tell, but I guess Eddie Stubbs would be one of those people because the way he talks is, it's big, yet it's not screaming, you know. <coughs> uh, and he's got this warm voice on the radio. I'd say also for the sort of joy of life that I have in announcing a guy named Billy Block, who was so big yeah. in Nashville and put together the Western Beat Roots Revival and yeah. had a lot to do with beginning the whole Americana charts. Uh, he passed away last year, maybe it was this year. I mean, time flies and so many of our legends are passing away. But I'd say the two of them together, uh, the excitement of Billy Block, and hopefully the richness of voice, you know, of Eddie Stubbs, maybe even Grant Turner, who is a resident of the Williamson County area, an opera announcer for many years who's buried here. But I also would have to say, you know, sometimes singing would be Ernest Tubb, my father, or Waylon Jennings. Just the, uh, the whole vibe of the, if you want the whole montage of what happened. But let's ask William, so who inspired you the most? I'm still working on that. I'm ah. still working on my singing voice. It's, 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 <laughs> it's interesting to me to hear the different influences uh, yeah. that all of us have in our working career. So let's talk about some of those days that you grew up, <coughs> excuse me, as a son of a, a very, very well-known, important person in country music. Well, I'll, I'll, you know, once again, back to the picture. You, I love Recently, that. I believe you got a plaque too, didn't oh, you? Oh, I know, yeah. Well, we have another, yes. This is George the Fourth, George Hamilton the Fourth, and the international ambassador of country music. He got that name for taking country music. He had TV series in Canada and over in all the BBC in England. Uh, actually, out of Charlotte, North Carolina, he was partners with a man named Arthur Smith, who wrote Doolin Banjos and uh, Guitar Boogie, and the Arthur Smith TV show syndicated across America. But most importantly, he took <coughs> country music behind the Iron Curtain which was kind of a, an interesting thing. He was the first person to do that. Uh, Into Russia. Yeah, went to Russia, and he did a lecture concert series at Moscow University. And it was very interesting. <coughs> he taught me, you know, sometimes the people who were at the top, we had a lot of hard times, you sure. know, relations with different countries. But many times the students and the young people and people through music can communicate, because music is an international language. Sure. So with him being the international ambassador of country music, I'd say he really just inspired me to look beyond. And that's why we've really, you know, when we were talking about doing a radio show, we could have had an AM radio show, but why not go beyond on the <coughs> internet? You know, people can watch our radio show uh, on our YouTube channel, NashVegas.tv. But I guess basically having good taste in music. He just loved great folk music, country music. Uh, and so I like to surround myself with people who love a variety, of, well, like yourself, a variety of good music. And you've got roots in the music, you know, from the mountains and, of course, William Covington. Uh, and it's interesting, music is not only <coughs> international language, but it's a national and local language. People are drawn to our state and to, oh. you know, this region especially because of the music. Well, and you and I are sitting here along with William talking about Americana and country yeah. music, but this area has also gotten a reputation for Christian music, yeah. gospel music. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people fail to realize most of us are raised in a church that you yeah. attended and there was great gospel singing. Yeah. Now, it may have been from a few women in the church, yeah. and one old man sits in the back, couldn't carry a tune in a bushel basket. Mm -hmm. But when you put all those sounds together, yeah. 
it was beautiful harmony that was being echoed throughout the halls of that church yeah. or that tent, depending on where you heard that good music. And many a young, yeah. aspiring star uh, will give influence and give credence and credit to some type of gospel music that they have. And you look and read and hear about the lyrics oftentimes, yeah. George and Will. It's about the hard times that they oh, had yeah. growing up. Yeah. Well, that's what really is <coughs> interesting. Americana music, country music, gospel music, soul music of all kinds, blues, speaks about hard times we've been through and getting, getting by. So it's real music. We've had a really great gospel duo on our show, Andrew Greer and yes. Cindy Morgan. And yes. they do this Americana thing that's <coughs> phenomenal. It is. You can watch those videos at NashVegas.tv. We've got a couple of minutes left of the show, and I'm sure, as always, I've overlooked something, failed to mention something that's important to you, or you will, that uh, we need to bring out. So here's your chi chance to chime in and say, Mayor, we need to talk about this, and, and just jump right in and tell me what I've overlooked. Well, we've got uh, <coughs> some great shows coming up in September and October. Uh, too many names to mention right now, but you can always be sure you'll find a variety of Americana music on the Viva Nash Vegas radio show. And, you know, it's neat. These chalkboards, if you ride by Handy Hardware, this beautiful chalkboard is still out there. And this is Chalk Art by CustomChalk.com. It really is interesting. This is a picture, of course, on the stage there. We've had some neat articles written about us over the years. We feel like we're only just beginning. We're three years old now, the show is. Um, what kind of things you got to say, William? I think we covered just about everything. Well, what do you sometimes do when it's at the end of a, a part of the show? Well, you hold up this thing. <coughs> our clap sign. It's our clap sign. That is All one right. of my major jobs <laughs> to kind well, we of encourage the, yeah. you know, the, the guests. Well, before we sign off, I want to I point out to the audience one more time that that there's no charge for your show. Correct. And you can come to almost any Saturday morning, either one of two places. The archives at Five Points, which used to be known as the old library mm -hmm. here in town. It was directly across from the post office. What time in the morning on Saturday? 11 o'clock. You know what I wanted to remind you all of? Please. I forgot that I'm teaching letterpress over at Omar College, a great design school here in Franklin. This what is, is one of my posters, Think Globally, Act Hillbilly. I like to do that. Woodblock <laughs> printing. And this is another one here. I mean, we'll probably have to come back again for another interview. <laughs> Franklin, Tennessee, good living since 1799. <coughs> All woodblock. And you come on by O'More College, and you can see how we do it. So you're doing O'More? We're doing the, the uh, Viva Las Vegas, Nashville, Vegas. Viva Nash Vegas. There yes. we go. We're at one or two places. <laughs> yep. It's free to the public, 11 o'clock in the morning. Family friendly. Family friendly. No reason not to come. It's absolutely free. Yeah, you'll love it. Thanks for being with us today. We're going to have to go. George, thank you for being with us very well, thank much. Thank you, Mayor. And what a wonderful appreciate time. for all the influence you're having, your family's had all in this general area. Well, make sure you visit the Williamson County Country Music Wall of Fame at the Williamson County Archives and Museum. And Will Covington, special guest, special friend of George Hamilton. We thank you both for being here. We'll sign off with a clap and Viva Nash Vegas. Viva Nash Vegas. <laughs> I'm Rogers Anderson. See you around the county the next time. Have a good day. <laughs>